What's up you guys? Forrest here with the Foco Flow Show and if you hear that low hum, you know the weather's bad and we've got the smoker up and running. We've got a pork putt on the grill today and I thought it was a great time to kind of give you a review update on the DVO suspension I'm running on my Ibis Ritmo V2. We've got the Onyx SC front fork and of course the Topaz uh, rear shock. So I'm gonna give you some insights, I'm gonna tell you about how we tuned it, what I liked, what I don't like so far about the DVO suspension. So if you're liking the content, please make sure you like and subscribe. We've got new videos every Thursday giving you insights, tips and tricks and trail highlights of the awesome trail we have here in Virginia so that you've got the tools and the bikes and the info you need to get out there and find that flow. the uh, outside high speed compression in just the six clicks and then you need a small um, hex screw to adjust the low speed compression. High speed is designed to be easily adjusted on the fly to almost a full lockout there so that you can climb easily. I don't mess with this one that much. Get it into that wide open setting, it climbs pretty good. The low speed compression, you usually adjust against how many full rotations you have. And then I'll give you an update on how I have mine set at, which is good uh, for the um, uh, big hard hits and how much it resists the compression. Uh, again, the low speed compression is what most bikes have that adjusts here on the fly. Going down to the rebound on the Onyx XSC, this is again, not super special or difficult. It is to the left faster, to the right slower. How much like a pogo stick faster or a uh, slow return on big hits. Looking under the neath here, you can see we've got the turn that you can do. Uh, pretty easy to adjust, not a big deal there. So that is pretty much what you want to look for on that side, the air on the floor, it comes easily in here. And then uh, DVO has great, uh, nothing special there, great adjustment uh, recommendations for sag and setting. There. And then the most unique thing about this DVO is this little guy here. Um, called the OTT or off the top. So they've got a coil in that chamber that with a, I think it's a five millimeter, might be a three, I'll double check that and put it up. Here you take all the air out of the fork and then you get the hex screw in there and in terms of the number of total rotations that you want from zero to, I believe it's 14 or 15, will adjust the small bump compliance off the top. So when that fork is cycling through and fast speed hit, how plush does it feel? Um, and so this was the thing that I had some issues with there on the bottom. It was really stiff, really tight to adjust, and I could not quite get it uh, to cooperate, and then it did actually break. And so had to actually uh, take it back to my sh bike shop. They did a great job taking care of me there, but we had to ship it to DVO in California and it was over the holiday. So it took about five weeks for them to replace under warranty uh, the O2, o OTT uh, adjustment there. I got it back and since then, I've been able to adjust it and get it really dialed in with that off the top. So it feels more plush. 
off that top. Because once you get to that mid and long travel, it feels like the Fox Factory uh, 36 that I was running on my Ritmo before then. So of all the things that OTT is kind of proprietary to DVO, and uh, it's not the only example of an issue with OTT that I've heard of. Uh, one of my friends has their other um, uh, front fork, I believe it's the DVO uh, Sapphire or something like that, and he also had a similar issue and had to send it off. So. Uh, think that there might be a, a little bit of concern there, but if you have good experience with it and no issues, you can get this fork dialed all the way in, even without volume spacers, so that you can get it dialed the way you want it. Zooming in on the Topaz, it's for the Ritmo V2, so it's got 147 millimeters of travel. Not a whole lot to explain here. You've got your air valve here, which is normal like most air shocks. You've got your rebound right here, uh, which is like most shots, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and then of course, and then you have basically a compression dial here, climb, trail, and wide open. Easy to adjust, no problem there. The one thing that is proprietary is this additional upper canister air pressure dial. This is really sensitive to fine tune the overall feel of the shock. It says between 170, 200 PSI. Note for if you're putting air in this, when you put the air uh, pump in there, it will immediately allow a little bit of that ghost air to uh, come out and then it'll read way lower. I thought this wasn't holding air, but we got with my local bike shop, talked to DBO and they said, no, that's normal. Get it all the way up to uh, the desired setting that you have, pull it off and set it and forget it. And then just keep an eye on if you're blowing through all your travel, you can fine tune it here. So ride impressions on this one compared to the DPX2 has been pretty good. I'm running this stock out of the uh, box here, the way that it's set up for the Ritmo. My DPX2, even with the max volume spacers in it, I could not get it to um, support me. I'm sort of a heavy rider. I'm 6'2". I take bad line choices on purpose through rock gardens, and it would blow through the travel on those like high speed repeated hits. I felt that a, one or two times here, but overall, I've been able to navigate it with that slightly longer travel and getting it dialed in just a little bit more effectively. So really happy with the, uh, um, Topaz as compared to the DPX2. It's not as tunable as the X2 from Fox. It's also an option. You also can run a coil here, which I have yet to experience. So overall, uh, real happy with that. It's been uh, worry-free early on. It feels super plush and you can get after it with all the, the good and bad line choices that you want to take. So no issues here. Um, again, more so thinking through uh, the overall experience with the front fork as well as the back uh, from DVO. So looking at the DVO setup guide, as I said, I'm just over 200 pounds, fully kitted up, 6'2", and they tell you to adjust the OTT setting first, and I am running that almost fully open, 12 revolutions. After you take all the air out of the fork, you use that five millimeter hex screw to adjust the off the top setting first, which is gonna be your small bump compliance. Then you move on to the air pressure. Regular shock pump will do it. And I have got it set right there in that more plush uh, 80 PSI range where I feel it gives it a little bit more of that supple feel in both high speed compression and low speed compression areas, which are also based off of the air pressure that you add into the fork. From there, the sag setting is right in the middle, shooting for around 20%. Sometimes I lean a little bit closer to 30, and you adjust that just by tweaking the air pressure in the uh, fork just a little bit, and then you move to rebound. Rebound is not terribly picky and easy to adjust on the fly, so play around with that just a little bit. We're again adjusting off of that 80 PSI. I'm right in that 10 to 12, shooting kind of right in the middle, 11 uh, clicks for the rebound and thinking of how quickly that uh, fork bounces back. From there, you adjust the high speed compression first, right, and that's gonna be those big hits and you use the dial and how many revolutions around it takes. I'm gonna go right in that three to four range based off the air that you have in the fork and once you get that dialed in, the low speed compression is that green click dial that you can do on the 
uh, fly. I run it either fully open or one click from open. To get you dialed in, I'm really happy with those settings and I think it does the job from there. Switching over to the Topaz rear shock and looking at the DVO guide, of course make sure that your stroke length matches the bike if you're going to upgrade, but for the Ripmo V2 this was easy as it comes with the bike. It's got the main air pressure uh, chamber which you can add with a normal shock pump that's pretty straightforward, looking for between 20 and 30%. Sag, I was at uh, 210 PSI. And then the other unique thing about the uh, the Topaz rear shock is it has another air port, air valve in the uh, the piggyback, in, so another bladder. And that is unique, allowing you to really fine tune uh, the air pressure, of course, and then the feeling of that rear shock. So on the top, I'm also going up to 210 PSI. Uh, looking for the overall ride uh, experience just to be a little bit more supported. Rebounds super easy there where we're going to be right in the middle with about five clicks, excuse me, four clicks um, to give it uh, a nice supportive feel off of those big hits, but not so fast that it bounces you off. From there, um, you do have a couple of unique options with the Topaz, uh, you know, messing with compression on the fly with that uh, little switch, it's pretty simple. But then you look over at the volume spacers, what's unique about the shock, and I haven't messed with this a whole lot yet, is being able to put volume spacers in both the positive or the negative chamber. So having a little bit of ride experience on the Topaz, I notice a little extra bottoming out, which means I probably will add at least one spacer into the positive chamber to make it a little bit less able to bottom out on big hits. So with all of that information, I did not deviate too, too far from the recommended settings when I set up the Topaz on my uh, Ritmo B2. I'll put all of the settings that I went with in the description so you have an idea of where I'm at. And of course, I'll update you if I make any major changes like those volume spacers to update uh, the overall ride quality. All things considered, really happy with how it feels. Really good shot. Can be a little bit more progressive, but you can do need to get it there so you can get it really dialed in. So overall, um, good uh, feeling and plushness, high speed, low speed, but why not get a quick view of what it looks like when it runs through the travel. We'll do a slow, slow motion bunny hopper tour for you to get a real feel for that therapeutic watching a, a full suspension bike run through its travel. And I can tell you when I do these bunny hops and slow speed drops, hucks to flat, it feels as plush as ever, soaks it up so you can keep on rolling. So there you have it, nice and smooth all the way through the travel. I hope you found this week's video useful, especially if you're running any of the different DVO suspension options that they have out there, but especially the Onyx SC uh, front fork or the Topaz rear shock um, that we have here on the Ritmo V2. There's other options out there, so if you've got experience with some of the other things, especially the coil on the rear shock and how that compares, comment below and let me know uh, the pros and cons of the coil versus the air shock and of course any other really cool fork options for the v2 so i hope all of this has uh, gotten you a little bit more informed a little bit more comfortable so that you can get out there on the dvo suspension and find that flow